Bonjour à tous, c'est Clément de Xbox TV, c'est un plaisir de vous retrouver en haut des toits de Stockholm pour le jeu tant attendu Mirror Edge Catalyst. Après 10 ans d'attente, ce nouvel opus débarque et pour ça on va interviewer Jeremy Miller, le producteur du jeu. On va savoir un petit peu les origines de Face sur ce préquel, sur ce nouveau moteur graphique. Bref, on va s'éclater. What kind of achievement with the, the last Mirror Edge I mean, Mirror's Edge for us is really, uh, it's got sort of three parts, and this feeds into the, the answer of um, the rise of Faith as this hero. Um, yeah. We have uh, first-person fluid movement in combat and exploring the city. And we uh, really looked at what, what is combat, and what is combat for Faith, because she is someone that uh, needs, she, I mean, part of what makes her amazing is her determination, and if there's something important that she really has to do. She will do anything she can to, to get there. And the movement itself uh, from, the, from the first game has been uh, a lot of work has gone into just allowing it to feel more fluid and have it react in a way that's uh, more how you feel it should be reacting. You know, when you try to jump to that pipe, you, you're more like, if you feel you were actually going to make it, you'll make it. And um, uh, being able to branch and, and have more options has been a big part of it as well. So. And uh, about the more option, mm -hmm. you create an open world. Yes. Can you uh, explain uh, this choice? Well, yeah, so we looking at what we wanted to do with Mirror's Edge and what really uh, resonated with, uh, with, with the first one was really about the time trials and how people move through the space. And, yeah. and at its core, it's about moving through this beautiful world. And having a city that you can free roam in and explore just seemed exactly what we, what we wanted out of it. And to do that was quite a big effort. I mean, everything is handcrafted in there. There's no sort of repeating yeah. of things. It's, uh, every, there's been so many routes and, and fluid spaces to get into and puzzles to solve and all of these things. So, and specifically, I think it'll really open up when we get into the time trials and people's ability to create their own yes. races. It, I think it just becomes this infinite yeah. thing, uh, which I'm excited to see. This is actually a reboot. Yeah. So it's not a prequel to the first game. What we did is we looked at you know, what, what was amazing about the first game and what we wanted to do yeah. now that we had this chance to, uh, to sort of bring it into this new generation of, of technology and gamers and yeah. everything. And we really wanted to, you know, expand on the universe, um, provide more depth to the gameplay and as well as to the characters. And when looking at that, we decided that we wanted to sort of reboot it and yeah. to tell this origin story of Faith. So it is, it is a, a reboot, so it doesn't relate to the first game. Anyway, okay. that's a... That's a, that's a separate story. Have you developed the game to make it replayable? Yes, in, in, in many ways. Um, it, there is a progression, so as you evolve through it, you gain access to new tools and yeah. new moves and, and different things. Uh, at any time, you can go back and replay earlier missions. Yeah. I mean, we've been very open and understanding with the whole concept of speed running, and so our levels are built around having multiple paths that you can choose to go through them. And to take down an enemy or to... to take down an enemy, to avoid to the enemies, away. to um, you know, use this advanced move that you didn't really realize right. we'd built in there to get to another area that you didn't know you could get to and cut off a little time here and there. Yes. So I think actually replaying our missions make them better as yeah. you go through and you, and you can read the environment more, or you have more tools to go through. Fluidity, uh, dynamic. Yeah, it'll just get better and better and better at it. What was your inspiration for the design of the city? One of the pillars is actually the believable. Okay. So we looked at a lot of uh, amazing architects and were heavily inspired by uh, different architects. Um, we looked at Tokyo, okay. uh, different cities, and how the buildings are structured. Okay. Um, so we've... About Matrix, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not, no? Uh, not directly. I mean, there's ver various things in a lot of different places we looked for influence, but it's really finding very modernist architects. We've looked at often very specific buildings okay. throughout the entire world and different countries, different places, and sort of used inspiration for our facades. I mean, a big thing is the minimalist architecture, that sense of um, everything is extremely expensive and, but also believable, like when you get up close, you know, the materials are real yes. materials and they actually, 
you know, have used proper hinges on doors and, and everything like that. So from a distance it looks too perfect, but when you get up close you realize that it is yes. actually real. Thank you. Thank oh, you welcome. very much. <laughs> That's a pleasure. J'espère que cette interview vous a plu. Nous, on quitte Stockholm pour retourner à Paris et on attend avec impatience la sortie du jeu. Pour l'instant, via le gameplay que vous avez découvert, c'est une sorte de pré-bêta, donc qui est encore perfectible d'un point de vue graphique. On attend les améliorations avec impatience. On se retrouve sur les réseaux sociaux avec le hashtag Xbox TV pour avoir votre avis, savoir qu'est-ce que vous vous attendez de ce jeu. Et n'oubliez pas, à bientôt.